forms to begin and end, because why not? This one is by somebody named Tom Hennon, and it's called The Life of a Day. And I just picked it because it's the end of the day for many of us, and almost the end of the day, even if you're on the West Coast. Like people or dogs, each day is unique and has its own personality quirks, which can easily be seen if you look closely. But there are so few days as compared to people, not to mention dogs, that it would be surprising if a day were not a hundred times more interesting than most people. But usually they just pass, mostly unnoticed, unless they are wildly nice, like autumn ones full of red maple trees and hazy sunlight, or if they are grimly awful ones in a winter blizzard that kills the lost traveler and bunches of cattle. For some reason, we like to see days pass, even though most of us claim we don't want to reach our last one for a long time. We examine each day before us with barely a glance and say, no, this isn't one I've been looking for, and wait in a bored sort of way for the next, when we are convinced our lives will start for real. When we are convinced our lives will start for real. Meanwhile, this day is going by perfectly well adjusted, as some days are, with the right amounts of sunlight and shade, and a light breeze scented with a perfume made from the mixture of fallen apples, corn stubble, dry oak leaves, and the faint odor of last night's meandering skunk. The Life of a Day by Tom Hennon. Thank you so much, Meg. So we'll just, I'll just give you a brief overview of sort of what's going to be happening uh, in this probably fairly brief event. Um, all of the staff and fellows are going to introduce themselves. Staff maybe will give a brief overview of what they're working on, but, but we're not necessarily program staff, so it's a little bit different. And then um, Meg is going to do a blessing of the chalices, much like on a back to school night in a church, maybe you would do a blessing of the backpacks for the new school year. So we'll do a blessing of the chalices and then a closing and then we'll be done. And if people have questions, feel free to just raise your hand and, and jump in as you are feeling willing and able and need to. So I'll introduce, oh, go ahead, Meg. This is being recorded, correct? Yes, it is. People who are not here live can come and see it later. So Exactly. Don't say anything you don't want to have recorded. Exactly. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself first. My name is Hannah Alor Isaacs. Um, I do a little bit of lots of different things, as you'll hear from many of the CLF staff. That's sort of how we roll. Um, I do a little bit of social media. I work with the prison ministry program. I, I manage the reading project that we have with our prisoners. And then I also do some behind the scenes administrative assistant work as well. Um, and I'm so happy to be here and to be working with CLF. And Lori, why don't you go next? And then we'll sort of go Lori, Beth, Jorge, and then and Lynn, and then move into fellows. Hi, everybody. My name is Lori Stone Sertoski, and I am the Director of Technology for the Church of the Larger Fellowship. In that role, I spend some time doing also a lot of a little and a little of a lot. I spend some time um, working on the website and uh, preparing for our live stream channels for worship and doing data analysis for fundraising and uh, communications work, uh, print pieces, design work, um, and I also help to manage the staff blog that we're hoping to bring back this fall that uh, we started last fall and I've also did, done quite a bit of work with the project this spring for Sunday Soul, uh, which was that collaboration we had with the um, First Unitarian Church in Portland. I'll go ahead and pass to the next staff person. That's me. 
My name is Beth Murray, and <clears throat> let's see, I work on memberships of both prisoner memberships and free world people. So I'm the person that's, if you're joining the CLF or if you're submitting a new donation, I'm the, the point of contact for that. Um, I also work on Quest production, so I'm the one that nags everybody on to the next step. Um, under the category of prison ministry, I process pen pal applications. I respond to lots and lots of letters and forward um, <clears throat> pen pal mail through the Boston office. It's my phone number and my email that are the primary points of contact for general CLF. So I get lots and lots of inquiries about, can you tell me, am I still a member? So I answer lots of questions like that. And then uh, I do little things like pack for GA and work on jewelry inventory and things like that. So let's see, I don't remember who's next. I think let's do Lynn next and then Jorge, cause then we're moving more into program. Right, take it away, Lynn. I sort of do program. Um, officially, I'm the Minister for Lifespan Learning, so I do things with religious education, including providing curriculum for people to use at home or in small congregations. Um, and I do worship, part of the worship team. I edit Quest, so along with the rest of the Quest team, I help choose material for monthly quest, um, and then I do the first sort of major round of editing to make everything fit and sound as pretty as it can. Um, I write the material for the Daily Compass, so Anna and other members now find the pictures, um, but then I look at the pretty pictures and go, huh, what clever have we to say about that that people might respond to? Um, so if you want a daily reflection question and a nice picture to look at to put you in a reflective mood, you can sign up for the Daily Compass. That's free, available online. Um, and then I do various other things that um, work with Sarah on. Um, we have the Family Quest page for children, families, and religious educators on our website. So that changes monthly and is um, related to the theme. Um, I do the RE refrigerator page, which is a two-page printable that you could put on your refrigerator to have a set of um, ways for families to interact around our monthly themes. Um, so that's also available to members if you want to be able to talk about our themes with kids. Um, and then other stuff like proofreading things just because things that go out need to be proofread. Um, and generally meeting with fellows and lots of things here and there. I think Great. that's general summary. Thank you so much. Jorge? Hello, everyone. I am Jorge Spinel. I, live, I am in Colombia right now, which this is the magic of technology. And what I do is I am minister for the Latino ministry, which means that I am so in charge of every single Spanish-speaking person in the world that is going to come sooner or later to Unitarian Universalism. It's going to take some time, but that's where we're working. That means outreach, that means uh, doing very limited uh, pastoral care, doing a uh, translation of materials to Spanish, that means uh, creating the material and uh, just engaging volunteers and engaging people so they write materials about you use from their perspective, their culture, their country, their reality and to find ways to put that online in a way that people can use it, that people can uh, use it to deepen their, their UUism or to create a stronger communities and or uh, connect to each other. So it is, uh, that's, that's the Latino ministry. 
Thank you so much. So we are lucky enough at CLF to have um, folks that we call learning fellows and they are um, awesome, awesome people and they all work in different areas. We have three of them here with us tonight, right? Counting is hard at this time of day, folks. Um, we have three of them with us tonight. We have two others who were unable to make it. Um, kept, we have three others, thank you, who were unable to make it. Wait, who's the other? So Amanda. Learning fellow and the prison ministry director. Oh, and the, right. I, I was going to get there, but thank you. Yep, mm -hmm. So Amanda and Kevin are both learning fellows and they are busy this evening. And then Mandy Goheen is our director of prison ministry. Um, and after Lauren and Sarah and Slim sort of talk about what they, they'll do, we'll circle back. I'll talk a little bit about prison ministry and Beth and I work on that team closely together. And so feel free to jump in if you have things. Um, it doesn't so much matter to me what order we go in, but Sarah's on top of my screen. So let's go with Sarah first. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. So I'm one of the CLF's learning fellows. I'm in my second year. And I have a few different projects that I'm really excited about. I am the learning fellow for online learning and family ministry, which means that I get to work closely with Lynn on things like the Family Quest webpage. But I also oversee the Learning Center, which you can find at clfuu.org slash learn. And that's the place where we house all of the information and registration about the online classes that we hold. Most of those classes are done via video conference, very much like this. And they're a really great way to connect more deeply with people uh, who are other members of the CLF and UUs around the country and around the world. Um, as part of the Learning Center this year, we're starting to, we're going to try doing some book groups. Um, this is uh, something we haven't tried in recent years, at least not using video conferencing. And uh, we're definitely going to be doing some discussion groups around the UU Common Read this year, as well as a couple of other books of interest to UUs uh, around the, uh, across the board. We're doing some social justice, some theology. It should be a lot of fun. Um, but the thing that I've been working on the most lately that I'm really excited about is the CLF's new video covenant groups. Um, I sort of oversee the covenant, and, covenant group and small group ministry program here at the CLF. And uh, we, in addition to continuing the targeted covenant groups and small group ministries that we already have, we're going to be expanding into a theme-based covenant group that is open to all members of the CLF and to UUs who are also not members of the CLF. And for us, that's a really important piece of the connection. We have so many ways to connect over the internet and digitally and through Quest Magazine that for people who want to have the experience of going into a deeper relationship using this technology, I think these covenant groups are going to be a really great experience. And again, you can sign up for covenant groups at clfuu.org slash covenant dash groups. And our website is, is navigate, navigate, nav, easy to navigate. navigate. Thank you. That's a hard word. Um, and with that lovely speech, um, let's go to Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren Way. I am a learning fellow new this year um, and very excited to be here and a part of the Church of the Larger Fellowship. Uh, my area is congregational life and pastoral care. So I'll be spending a lot of time on Facebook um, engaging with our multitude of Facebook groups and our Facebook moderators and that community of um, vibrant and active communication and engagement and um, togetherness. I'm, I am a big fan and proponent of a Facebook ministry and so it's really exciting to me to be here and be a part of that idea. I think there is vast potential for connection there. Um, and another thing that I'm super excited about that I am working on um, 
is I now have the honor and the gift of facilitating the White Allies Covenant Group and working closely with folks who want to go deep and engage and be a part of making the beloved community um, and be vulnerable and be open and have those conversations. Um, so I feel very fortunate and I'm very excited about that work and all of the things that I will be doing at the CLS. So thanks. And Slim, just personally, I'm so happy to see you on Zoom. It's so fun having you back. Yeah, my, <clears throat> my hair is growing out. Um, folks, I'm a, my name's Slim Moon, and I'm returning for a second year I, of, I, as a learning fellow here at CLF. I took the summer off, which was very nice. It was sort of like a sabbatical. Um, and I, I really focused, especially last year, on worship. And this upcoming year, I'll be doing worship as, at least at the beginning of the year. I'm not sure, possibly all the way through. And then um, I also worked on podcasts last year. And this year, I will continue to work with podcasts, but we'd like to develop more podcast content and maybe some new video content. And I'm taking over getting involved with The View. So it's all kind of a, a new media and entrepreneurial ministry. And we'll still be figuring it out. and. Um, defining it this year. I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. But I think um, all of the interns and learning fellows get involved in every aspect of ministry some. You know, we all preach and we all end up doing some pastoral care and we all end up doing some writing and some teaching. Um, and I, it's just, a, it's, I'm, I'm really glad to be back and I'm excited for this year. One of the things we always say is that CLF is always in beta. So you heard each of the staff members say, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, you know, if so-and-so needs help, I can do that too. And one of the things that's awesome about my position is that I get to work with the prison ministry. And this is a really exciting time in our prison ministry program. We're getting ready to launch a new website and a new program called Worthy Now, uh, which is going to going to connect folks around the country um, and maybe around the world. You never know. CLF is an international community who are doing uh, prison ministry work, not even necessarily Unitarian Universalists, but any, any folks doing prison ministry work from a framework of you are worthy now and we are all worthy now. Um, and there's more information on that forthcoming. It will be on the website at www.worthynow.org. But one of the things that the prison ministry program really needs right now is new pen pals. So if you are um, interested in doing that, there's more information on the website. Um, it's a longer URL, so I don't have it right now, but we will get it for you uh, when we post this video. And um, being a pen pal is just an amazing way to connect with our members, both in the free world and also um, who are currently incarcerated. And Beth, unless you have anything to add about prison ministry, I'll turn it over to Meg. I just wanted to share a little bit about the fellows who aren't here and the work that they'll be doing. So Amanda Weatherspoon um, is finished at Star King. She's graduated. And she will be working on worship this year. She'll also be doing a covenant group for people of color and some work with um, seminarians of color. Um, we're noticing a lot of people of color coming to CLF right now, and we really want to be there to receive people who, for a variety of reasons, are having trouble going to bricks and mortar congregations right now. So um, she'll be developing some program there as well as some worship services for people of color. And Kevin is, Kevin Jago is a Meadville student who's also going to be out in Brooklyn interning. One thing to know about our fellows is many of them have very complicated lives that involve multiple congregations, which is great for CLF. Maybe not for them, but it's great for CLF. <laughs> and so Kevin, um, Kevin's very devoted humanist and wants to do humanist worship. So he'll be on the worship team generally, but also creating some uh, 
worship opportunities for people who identify as humanist. Uh, he also will be working on something called Faith Rocket, which is how we are reaching out to support small congregations, uh, leaderless congregations. And um, so he'll be, he'll be our person on that. So every year when fellows are leaving, and this year we're losing Bob, and we've already lost Jordan, and I'm blocking out who else we even lost. I'm always devastated when people are leaving, and then these amazing new people turn up every single time. And um, so it's always really exciting to, we have the privilege of getting to choose the best of the best of people who really want to try some different things. Kimberly Debus, who did our um, aesthetics, and you probably saw her in worship as well. So um, Debus, I know, you know, it's so weird. When you know people online, you never say their names. I think it's Debus, actually. <laughs> So anyway, it's a great team. As you can see, we're all very lucky to have one another and to have you. And I see leaders on here and folks from all over. And um, the programs are as good as the people in them. And so there have been some really deep and high quality online experiences, particularly which put the lie to the fact that you have to be in proximity to really go deep. So our connect, deepen, and act, I feel like, is really happening. The other exciting thing happening on our staff is that Lena Gardner, who you have seen in various places, but sometimes in worship asking for money, um, is going to be doing full-time organizing this year with Black Lives Matter. She'll be doing it under the auspices of the CLF, but she'll also be working with Standing on the Side of Love, Black Lives Minneapolis, and She's been doing that and being our fundraiser, and um, so we're in the process of hiring a full-time fundraiser and um, having her do that work full-time and stop trying to be two people at the same time. So before I do Blessing of the Chalices, do people have questions or wonderings or curiosities or anything that you'd like to share? It's always so surprising when we're quiet. <laughs> well, then I'm going to invite people to, if you have a chalice, to get it. If it's not with you, to find it. If it's online, hook to it, wherever it is. Is everybody back? Barbara, I, I see a lamp, but I don't see you. Are you there? If you're there, can you put your chalice in the, in the view? And um, Anne and Emily, I'm assuming you don't have cameras. You could type if you are okay and have your chalice ready. Um, this is Anne. I have my chalice ready. Okay, great. Thank you. Emily, are you ready? Okay. All right. So right now, most of our chalices, I think all of our chalices are not lit. And that is, of course, the way that they are most of the time. So I want to bless the unlit chalices. And, um, oh, Lori's, <laughs> Lori's ahead of the game with a lit chalice. So take a moment to just look into the bowl of the chalice. And every week in worship, we say this bowl holds us. This is a bowl that holds us. And so I invite you to see yourself and this beloved community held in this bowl all the time, whether it's lit or unlit. And here it is in its unlit state, and it is blessed. This chalice holds the energy of people we will never meet, whose names we will never know, whose lives nonetheless touch us as we are connected in that interdependent web. And so I invite you to invite in all of the love of all of that interconnectedness into this unlit chalice as it sits humbly wherever it sits in your house. 
and to know that it is never empty, even when there's not a candle in it. Then I invite you, if you have a match to light the chalice, to light it now. And if you don't, light it in your imagination. And then you can hold up your flames to share. There you go, Molly, great. And so we say we carry the flame. As we bless these chalices, may we allow this flame to carry us. May we see ourselves in that living flame, part of the living faith, part of the movement. The flame is never still. It's always, always moving, and it's always transforming energy, wax or oil to air, wood. It's a transformational element, the fire. And may we allow ourselves to be transformed by the flame that's in the chalice, that universal flame of love, the flame of justice. Now I invite you to blow your chalice out that quickly. And as the smoke moves towards the air and dissolves and no longer is your chalice lit, may you know that the moments that we share dissolve, but they're still part of the air that we breathe. They're still part of the connectedness. And so as the chalice holds that flame, even when it's not lit, may we always know that our energy matters that it's moving into the world, that it is finding a home, and may we always know our connection through this chalice. May the chalices be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much. And if there are no questions, Meg, I think we're ready for your closing poem. And please know, folks who are here and folks who are watching this, as a recording that the CLF staff loves nothing more than to hear from you and to work with you and to be in relationship and in community with all of you. And all of our contact information is on the website, clfuu.org. And please get in touch. So this poem is about letting go into the universe. It's a poem I've loved for a very long time. It's called First Lesson by Philip Booth. Lie back, daughter. Let your head be tipped back in the cup of my hand. Gently, and I will hold you. Spread your arms wide. Lie out on the stream and look high at the gulls. A dead man's float is face down. You will dive and swim soon enough where this tide water ebbs to the sea. Daughter, believe me when you tire on the long thrash to your island, lie up and survive. As you float now where I held you and let go, remember when fear cramps your heart what I told you. Lie gently and wide to the light year stars. Lie back and the sea will hold you. First lesson, Philip Booth. Lovely to see you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. And congratulations on attending the first annual CLF Back to Church Night. Yay! Thank you, everybody. Bye.